This is one of the most expensive bases we've ever featured on this channel. It's the Budgie Amrita Woodworm Michael League signature base. Yes, the Snarky Puppy Michael League. Let's check it out. Welcome to Base the World. My name is Gregor Fries and on base we have Kai Lemke today, who is, I believe, a big fan of Snarky Puppy, but honestly, who isn't? It's a fantastic band that made many people fall in love with jazz again. I've seen them once and had a huge pleasure to welcome Michael at my studio after the show to record some videos. Uh, don't search for them, they're all gone, but man, what a day we had. <laughs> talk about the space and I think you can already tell what it's called the Amrita Woodworm. This is an older body that was living room and dinner for a family of woodworms some time ago. Of course they were sent in an all expenses paid vacation before their home got gentrified by Bruno Bacci to make the space. But what does it actually do? These woodworms have eaten channels into this probably rather old and dry piece of altar, which apparently helped the space to create a percussive, warm and airy sound. These are the words of Bruno Bacci. Of course, I have no way to prove this, but this recipe isn't special at all. This is basically the standard pea base formula, and this base sounds nothing like a standard pea base. Well, nothing is a big word, but you all know what I mean. You all know what a pea base sounds like, and this is different. <laughs> On the Bachi website there's a short film, a promo piece for the space, where Michael Lee perfectly explains what the space sounds like. They contain all of the frequencies that you want to produce as a bass player and they don't contain the frequencies that you don't want to produce. And yes, that's very much it. At its core this is a P-Bass. But the frequency range is all about basses and which there are no highs to be found, uh, to be heard. Which is perfect for the sounds Michael is using in Snarky Puppy. We've discussed the munched on body and now let's talk about the other features. We have a flamed maple neck, we have an ebony fingerboard with a custom inlay at the 12th fret and a, let's say, fun looking headstock. It's a rather unique design, but I have no issues with it at all. When it comes to the aluminum pickguard, I have some thoughts. If this was my base, I would probably take it off. Let's just leave it there. The hardware is from Hipshot, the best in the world, and the pickup is an Aguila AG4P Hot, uh, which is an overworn P base model. And now let's hear this base with an Octaver. <laughs> So what else do we have? The entire base comes in a nitro finish, which is an extremely annoying and old-fashioned technique. It's not really done anymore because instrument production is much more industrialized these days. It takes an insane amount of time to apply layer after layer by hand. But it's the thinnest and best finish you can get. Nitro and shellac, which have both pretty much died out, is what was used by the old masters to make sure the instruments are protected, but can resonate as natural and free as they can. Also, the neck is not what you would expect from a precision kind of bass. This is rather slim, like a jazz bass, with a slight tendency towards a wee shape on the back. But honestly, this doesn't really matter. What makes this bass special is what it feels and sounds like. To sum it all up, this is amazing. What a bass. Of course, it's expensive. Well, really expensive, but I don't mind it at all. This doesn't seem like a money grab. This is a very special bass and an absolute masterpiece. Whoever can afford this and will end up buying this base, I'm, I'm not jealous. But can I come visit every now and then? 
The Michael League Signature Base. What a base. And uh, thanks for watching. Here's another video. Here's a road trip and here's me saying ciao. Base <laughs>